You know, we talk a lot about the rest of the world going now. It rolls off our lips so powerfully, you know, the songs on it, they go to hell, straight up. Come on, talk to me, somebody. We talk about the, the world, how they're going to hell, the neighbors going to hell, the, your boss going to hell because he didn't give you a five cent raise. But everybody going to hell. Person cuts you off in the parking lot of Walmart, you're going to hell. Straight up, you're going to hell. Person disrespects you at Starbucks and cut in front of you. But I, I think that maybe that's the question you should ask yourself. Maybe tonight you should ask yourself, am I, am I even going to heaven? Can I tell you, just because you're sitting in this church, don't mean you're going to heaven. I don't care how many people you, you surround yourself by. It's keeping me warm. Cold, it's cold. Lukewarmness is the dying of conviction. <clears throat> and conviction often dies a very, very slow death. I remember Pastor Campbell saying for years that nobody backslides all at once. That's just our dramas on Saturday. Talk to the preacher, somebody. It's not dramas on Saturday. Where the devil's just busting, you're having a prayer meeting. Oh, Father God, most holy one. And the devil kicks the door and, Rah! You're like, no! No, stop it, Mr. Satan! I'm on fire for God! And he's like, no, you're not. Yes, I am! No, you're not. Comes in, the Grim Reaper comes in and drags you out, and you're kicking with your Holy Ghost filled up. That's only on Saturday night. I said, That's only on Saturday night. That ain't real life, that ain't you, that ain't me. If you start getting lukewarm, it didn't happen the day before yesterday. Can the church say amen? If you were apathetic here today, it didn't happen on Saturday, and you woke up on Sunday like, Where's all the fire gone? <laughs> Come on, Slow breathe. death of conviction. Yeah. All the symptoms were there, but you didn't pay any attention to it. It's kind of like when you have a sickness and infection, body aches. Not only does the church have body aches, but you personally have spiritual body aches. You know, you're like, something right. Ooh, something right with me. And other people can tell you, no, you look okay to me. You ever ask somebody, man, how do I look? My eyes. <laughs> look fine to me. Is my eyes all right? No, no, no. They're white. They're white. They're white. They're white. They're white. <laughs> but on the inside, you know. That's how we are spiritually. I don't care who you're sitting by telling you, you know something. Man. You're doing good. But you know you ain't. So, let me close. Is there any more chicken? <laughs> <laughs> With the remedy. You know what I love about the Lord? He always gives you a way out. Yeah. It, don't deserve a good savior. He always gives a way out. So he has this, this remedy, this, this Jesus prescription for unfaithfulness. Because lukewarmness is a symptom of the cancer of unfaithfulness. It's an unbelief of the soul. That's what lukewarmness is. And if it's left untreated, it's going to have a horrible experience in your life. The problem with the church of Laodicea was not that the world had infiltrated the church. The problem with the church of Laodicea is that the church never made an impact in the world. Never. Never. You guys know why we exist? In case you didn't know, this church is not here on this corner 
So we can all sit in here and just shine on each other. Can I get an amen from somebody? Come on. Maybe you're wondering, like, what is this whole thing about? The reason why this church is here is that we can change this community. Yes, that's, true. that's why this church is here. Go and give the Lord some praise. That's why this church is here. In case you didn't know, now you know. We're not here to have some special little club where only special people get in and we've got a little uh, 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 place outside where you sign in and you got to have a card. Walk in and see all your groupie friends. Hey, how you doing, man? You know, you look like Pastor Stacy, but anyway. <laughs> We're not, a, we're not a social club. They never made a difference in their community. They were content on having a Christianity that was convenient. In fact, when you go to the ruins of Laodicea, you'll find that the ruins of an early, uh, of early synagogue. The marketplace, and they had been socially accepted by society. Everything's there. But they said, oh, man, they're good people. You know what I love about the, that, that Laodicea church, man? And they don't say nothing about religion. That's what I like about them. You know, when people start saying stuff like that about me, you know what I like about brother so-and-so? Man, he keeps all that religious stuff to himself. He's a good dude. <laughs> Y'all are hearing what the preacher's preaching. You know what I love about Sister So and So? I've never heard her say one thing about the Lord. <laughs> That's the kind of Christians I like. I might go to her church. Quiet up in here. Come on. I'm Thank just you about preacher. done, y'all. I'm going to leave the door to say to me off. So the great physician says, be zealous and repent. Yep. So he says, you got a sickness, you leave it unchecked, you're going to die. <clears throat> the great physician's talking to us. He says, you've got a sickness, and it's called spiritual apathy, and you need help. And the longer that you go without treating this sickness, you're going to die. How does a lukewarm person become zealous? That's the question. How? If you, you're here, you're like, I'm lukewarm, how do I get on fire? Well, you're not going to get on fire by just saying, I'm going to get on fire. <coughs> I've been to enough conferences and realized eh, that ain't going to work. <laughs> You've been to enough revivals where you realize eh, that ain't going to work. You sit, you come to the altar, oh, God, make me zealous, 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 make me zealous. And you get frustrated. Because you find out by Monday morning, you're like, where's the fire? <laughs> the problem is not receiving the disease of which lukewarmness is a symptom. That's the problem. And if you think all you have is a cold, you may not think much of the fever that you have. But if you find out that cancer is causing your fever, suddenly zeal is not the problem. Lukewarmness is a symptom of the cancer of unfaithful unbelief in the soul. So listen. The lukewarm must repent and do it immediately. The problem is not that we don't know what to do. The problem is we won't do what we need to do. The problem is not we, it's not that we're here today. I just don't know what to do. It's that we just won't do what we know we need to do. Mm, come on. And so the Lord is not asking you to say, oh God, I'm here and I just don't know what I need to do. He says, no. Why don't you do what you need to do? Please listen. The issue here is not to say I'm going to get on fire. What we must say is I know the reason for my lukewarmness and it is compromised. That is my problem. Yeah. Come on. I know the reason. It's my compromise. I started compromising my prayer, compromising in my reading, compromising my church attendance, compromising my consecration. Look at me. Yep. Come on. I don't even recognize myself. I've got a lot of other good things happening, but those things don't impress him. Right. 
We need to say, God, I'm not going to rely on things more than you. You missed a good spot to say that. I'm not going to let Sunday morning be my only day in worship. Can, can I say, I hope that you just don't come on Sunday morning and you expect Pastor Campbell to do all the work you should be doing. I'm getting tired of people being all these weird Christians and always you know, coming and putting all this pressure on the pastor. I just feel, I just, you know, I love everything about it, but in mean, the church, I love it, but um, the pastor, you know, I just don't feel like I'm being fat. How about you feeding yourself? Come on, man. I don't think people have to be following you around all the time with a, with a spoon. Yeah, open up the hangar. Open up the hangar. Here it comes. You're eating your food, baby. Somebody better have me preaching here. Follow you around all week begging you to eat. Go, go. If you're hungry, eat. Thank you. You know how to eat. You're going to eat in a couple minutes. Let me act on it. I would. I just knew how. If you're hungry, I'm a friend, don't give me that chicken, bro. But I second, I want the second win of the jubilation. So the Lord, he told the church in Laodicea, he said, listen. Purchase eye drops. I said. He said, buy, get it from me. <coughs> Maybe you have some problematic areas in your life. And you're ignoring them. I want to challenge you. So God, you gotta give me some eyes that I can see. God, anoint my eyes that I will not be a blind person when it comes to me. When it comes to my own spiritual state, God, help me to see properly. Let me get some eye salve. Because these people, they knew exactly what he was talking about. Christ, he brings hope. He says in verse number 20, and I know this is my fifth close, but this is like for real, for real, for real. <laughs> he says, I stand at the door and knock. So I said, I stand at the door and knock. Now, I know we use this all the time for unsaved people. We use it for our altar call and the extreme. Uh, he's standing at the door and he's not. Can I say, most unbelievers don't even know what the heck you're talking about. Here he is. He's standing at the door. And he's like, <laughs> All the unsafe people. <laughs> this door, there's a lot of doors. <laughs> <laughs> so he lets us know. That he's close. He's letting us know that he is persistent. Come on. Uh, he says, I know how you are. And he says, that's why I love you. I'm persistent. I'm standing at the door and I'm knocking. And he says, if anyone opens up and lets me in, I'll chill with him. That's what Stacey little translation is. But, but he, says, he says, I will I will dine with him. And I just want to know, are, are some people here today, are you tired of eating without Jesus? I'm going to tell you something, folks. I don't care how coy and smooth we are. If he ain't in here, we better get the heck out of here. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. If his presence ain't in this church, y'all, we got to go. We might as well go to Dutch Brothers. We might as well go down the coffee rush. You might as well get on to some taco shop somewhere. If he ain't here, go do something else. But he's not. He's persistent. And he says, if anyone, 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 if you open up, I will come in. And I will sit down with you and we will kick it together. And you'll learn from me. And I'll teach you my art. That's what I want today. I would rather have a little with him than a whole lot without him. Is he knocking on the door of your heart? I challenge you. Maybe you're feeling the symptoms of being lukewarm. You're like, I've lost the plot. I've, I've incubated and I've shielded myself 
with all my stuff. But on the inside of me, honestly, I don't care either way. I just hope I make heaven my home with all the other in-between stuff I don't care about. We need to get some stuff right. We need to cry out to the Lord here at the altar and say, God, you know something? You're knocking, you're loving and persistent, and I open up and I invite you to come back in and take up residence in my life. You call the shots. You tell me where you want to go, I'll do it. You tell me when to speak, I'll speak. You tell me when to move, I'll move. Because I want you to be in complete control of this message. Amen. I believe that's his message, not condemnation tonight. His message is hope. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? Let's bow our heads and our hearts. God bless you. Thank you for being patient with me. I really appreciate it. Our heads are bowed.